The Supreme Court just made a flurry of decisions, and honestly, most of those decisions favor the conservative side politically. But I want to believe that they didn't make their decision based on politics or what the feeling of the time was, but they made their decisions based on the Constitution, and I really believe they did, even though I am a conservative. So this led to the squeaky wheel method of governance that we're now seeing. So tons of people are protesting outside the Supreme Court, outside the Supreme Court justices' homes, even harassing them when they take their families out to eat. Uh, they're wanting the justices basically to do their bidding. They're wanting to say, listen, we don't want you to rule by the Constitution, rule by what we think right now. We are the squeaky wheel. And I want to say to you, I don't think we want this type. So the most famous decision was, of course, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And the whole point of that change was because the Supreme Court back in the 70s literally made law with that decision. Abortions not in the Constitution. It wasn't even in the minds of the authors of the Constitution. You know, Joe Biden said, this is a constitutional right. No, it's not. Nowhere in the Constitution. And the problem was the Supreme Court made it a right, made it into law. And there's no way we can challenge that. There's no democracy here. Nothing Congress can do to change that. I mean, it's really a, it was a dead end deal. And I can't believe it lasted 50 years. And so if we have this what's called living Constitution, you're basically saying instead of looking at the original intent of the authors of the Constitution, let's make it, you know, things change. Let's make this living Constitution, which would mean the Supreme Court can make laws. We don't want that, friends. It's the one third of the three branches of government that is to be free of politics. That's why we don't vote on the justices. It's why they get lifetime appointments. They're to be free of this, and we need that. So that when Congress, which is the branch of government that is to make law, as well as the states, when they make law, we have sort of a buffer. If it's an unconstitutional thing, we can challenge it in courts. It works its way up. And then when it gets to the Supreme Court, then based on the Constitution, they could say, you know what? This law is unconstitutional and throw it out just like they did Roe v. Wade. And again, all that means is it goes back to Congress or states to either create a new law, change it or whatever, to make it fit our Constitution. I think that's the way we want this to really happen. So when you go vote, this really is, should be a big issue. You know, you have some people who believe in the original intent of the Constitution, like me, and you have others who believe in this living Constitution, which is squeaky wheel <laughs> governance. Uh, so whatever culture brings us, and by the way, there are many things not in the Constitution besides abortion, climate change, you know, carbon emissions, all the alphabet of sexual preferences, the vaccine mandate. I can go on and on of stuff that's not there. So now that makes it the job of Congress and the states to make laws of these cultural and these new things taking place all the time. And the Supreme Court can let us know if it's constitutional or not. Seems like a good plan to me.